Hey everybody, it's Joe Chaffee. It's a Saturday afternoon here, and uh, what I'm doing right now is uh, I'm just going to go a little bit into the long range, because uh, of course we've been talking about this for weeks now. We're all trying to figure out what's going to happen three months from now. But on my website, I've separate, put a separate page for long range forecasts. On the home page, there's a button there that says long range. Just click on it. And what I've done here is I put together just a couple of graphics to show you uh, some of the things that we look at and and what they mean. Uh, I managed to save back on September 22nd, if you look uh, over to the side here, uh, I managed to save the snow cover for the northern hemisphere. Specifically, we look up uh, toward uh, western Canada and into uh, eastern uh, most Asia, or what we refer to as Eurasia. And you notice the snow cover is just beginning here. And one of the things we discovered last year and thanks to Dave Tolleris of Weather Risk, who was paying uh, extremely, extremely strong attention to this, uh, was the snow cover buildup in this area has a tendency to affect uh, winters in the east. Uh, the theory being that uh, if there's a rapid uh, advance of the snow cover uh, during uh, late September into early November, uh, that is a precursor to colder winters in the northeast. Now, if you look down on the second graphic here, uh, we have, this is for today, October 11th, and when we'll click on it, you'll notice that the snow cover here has advanced quite a bit, especially over Eurasia. So this would be a sign, the rate of advance. I have to actually look and find the index that tells us how fast it is advancing. But judging from the map here, uh, the looks pretty uh, impressive in terms of the amount of snow co cover that has increased over the last uh, couple of weeks. I've also put on the North Atlantic Oscillation Index and I've got this from uh, NSEP, uh, the, uh, from the Weather Service. And uh, when you look at this, and there's a link that'll take you uh, over to that page, uh, but uh, when, we, when we look at it, uh, you can see it's gone negative. Now what this means is when it's negative, and you'll notice by the way that it was negative for a good part of the summer, uh, that that means that uh, pressures over the Arctic region, but specifically what we're talking about here in the North Atlantic's oscillation is around the Greenland area. I've often referred to this when I was on the air as the Greenland block, very important in the wintertime. When it goes negative, it means pressures there are higher, and this tends to meet, displace cold air into the eastern states and usually take storm tracks to our south, and this is where we often know for snow lovers, we want to see uh, snows going out to our south, or at least for New York City and Long Island, and uh, that's when we get some of our bigger snowfalls. Notice uh, as we go into September, that index went positive, and now it's gone negative again. And this couples, by the way, with the Arctic Oscillation, which I don't have on here, but I did post about it a couple of days ago. That has gone strongly negative. So. My suspicion is over the next couple of weeks, we're going to see a different sort of pattern evolve. Some of the models are pointing to this, uh, where we might have some, uh, uh, perhaps some coastal action, hard to say. The waning El Nino, uh, we're starting to see some activity in the tropics. We have Tropical Storm Fay that's affecting Bermuda and that we'll be going out to sea, but there are a couple of other disturbances that probably have some potential. So over the next couple of weeks, weather-wise, we're going to have a lot of things to watch. And at some point, we're probably going to have to uh, really make a forecast here as far as what we think the winter is going to be like. But for now, we're just sort of sorting through clues, and we'll see how things evolve as we head through the rest of October and into November.